Hello everyone, this is Akira. This is Megumi. Uh, we're talking about Tsukemen today. Uh, that's Dippy Noodle. And uh, we are again broadcasting from uh, headquarters, my headquarters in Japan, uh, Kagawa. And uh, we're excited to talk about Tsukemen today because, you know, like what well, we asked, we get asked a lot of questions about, like, you know, what kind of noodles are great for Tsukemen, right? And uh, this kind of series, like, we kind of started, like, from last week. So like last week we did all uh, oh, what kind of noodles are suitable for uh, shoyu ramen. And uh, we're doing tsukimen today. And uh, so let's get dive into it. And so what, I, what I'm what i gonna do is that like, we're gonna go through a lecture first, right? And then Megumi is gonna make, well, uh, great tsukimen noodles uh, from scratch in the machine, right? And then um, you're going to move to our kitchen where, you know, we're gonna put together uh, kind of, kind of style of tsukimen that's kind of trending in Japan and for you guys to well you know learn kind of new style of tsukimen and uh, so let's get started uh, so tsukimen is uh, dipping noodle and then it's been like 70 years like since the first tsukimen was um, developed uh, in Japan like you know what well, was by this per, like what well, famous person like in the ramen industry um, Mr. Yamagishi, right? And uh, he so started kind of serving tsukimen. You know, tsukimen is kind of a dipping noodle, well, which was which actually existed before um, in soba cuisine and was well uh, popular, uh, you know, for a long time. And then, well, uh, Mr. Yamagishi, you know, thought that you know why not do it like in ramen, right? So that's how he started. And so, what is tsukimen and what do people look for uh, in good tsukimen noodles, right? And uh, maybe he's going to actually make tsukimen noodles from scratch later. And we are going to move to the kitchen. Um, where we, you know, just going to cook tsukimen noodles and then put together a bowl of tsukimen, right? Um, <laughs> kind of put it like bowl of ramen for this week. And of course, uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to, well, um, you know, ask us in the comments uh, during the well, lecture, this uh, class. So tsukemen is uh, something that well, evolved from, you know, the standard ramen noodle soup. So like we have standard ramen, it, it's like a shoyu ramen like we did like last week. And then it's evolving to, uh, you know, something um, that's called like tsukemen, like that's like dipping noodles and in the evolution of ramen, you know, um, it seems like there's less and less soup. And you know, like we, we first have like, you know, standard ramen noodle soup. And then oh, there's a lot of soup well, with some noodles in it. And uh, tsukimen, you know, you, you, we have like cooked noodles in the bowl. And then you have like well, uh, the dipping sauce that's in the separate uh, small bowl, right? And then you just dip the noodles in there and then eat it. And we have like something called like mazemen, and that's soupless noodle, soupless ramen. And uh, so you basically um, do not even have like soup in it. Like we just have like kind of sauce, uh, kind of special sauce, and it kind of, well, the noodles are covered with this special sauce. And it, we, that's that's what mazemen is. And then that's well considered as well a category of ramen. But we are talking about tsukimen today. And so let's dive into this like tsukimen dipping ramen and ramen consists of like these three components and each of which well consists of like you know these different variables and different components so uh noodles you know hydration size like shape ingredients and well soup like just like base stock uh tare flavored oil and each of these would be like, you know, like consists of like different stuff. Like, well, for example, based stock, like animal type, like plant based type, like fruit based type, uh, tare, soy sauce, and salt, miso, and so on so forth. So, tsukimen dish like is like kind of similar, um, similarly constructed. And um, so there's a noodles, right? Noodles, you know, made, that's made, they're made out of well, wheat flour, uh, well, like other grains. Uh, green flour and water and calcium and uh, the soup or dipping sauce uh, it all consists of like base stock and tare which was like kind of works as like seasoning 
and Comillo, that's flavored oil that adds the aroma to the stock of the soup, right? And of course, toppings and sides. And um, so that's what Tsukimin is. And so what is it? What, what is Tsukimin soup, right? And then, so we've seen this, uh, so like, well, um, infographic, like, you know, ramen soup consists of the stock, uh, tare, and the tare can be made out of like miso or soy sauce and salt. And there's flavor the oil, so the flavored oil can, uh, can be like, well, animal type, uh, plant type, and you know, each of these like animal type or plant type oils can be infused with like, you know, these different types of ingredients like garlic, dry shrimp, like fish, fish powder, uh, ginger scalp and other stuff, right? Um, so this is what, well, ramen soup is, and they like what tsukimin uh, dipping soup is. And one thing we have, we need to notice that, like, well, amount of tare, right, amount of motodare that we add to the base stock to also sort of like balance the flavor and the taste and then like sort of like sodium level. Um, as you can see, like, well, on the kind of lighter orange uh, bar is actually stock density, right? Stock density. And this kind of darker orange bar can represent the like it's the tare percentage to the base stock. So, um, yeah, pork tukemen right uh, has high, pretty high like well, well uh, stock density. So it's a very thick stock, and well, amount of tare you adding to this base stock is that also high. So like. Oh, you know, it's like it's very strong kind of intense um, dipping soup that we're making like for tsukimen. That's because um, you know we need to well um, we need to like you know dip the noodles and then well once you like well um, you know subbing the noodles right and you need to be able like kind of have the kind of level of uh, flavor like level of, like you know well taste that like you know well that's strong enough for you to be able like sort of well, have a satisfying sort of well eating experience. So that's why it has a like really high um, base stock, uh, base stock density and you know, strong like tare amount of uh, like strong like tare amount of tare. And so when you have like all these well a uh, bowl like a bowl and inside the bowl like you already have like tare like around like 50 grams to like 70 grams and then uh, flavor oil, uh, like 50 grams, 30, 60 grams, and then like, on, then you heat the base stock, right? And then um, bring it to boil, and then like you adding to that base stock to the, the bowl, where, you know, batari and the komu uh, uh, flavor oils are. So that's how you make the or dipping, dipping soup. But we're talking about uh, noodles today, so let's talk about noodles. So this is kind of typical um, tsukime noodles. Uh, you know, what, what we, I have a like picture of like, so this is kind of, well, well standard size for tsukime noodles. Um, they're relatively thick and, um, well, I think the color comes from like this, well, the ash of the flour and then ash content of flour that's used to make this noodle, particular noodle is like pretty high so that well, it kind of like turns into like sort of like a darker yellow color. And tsukimen noodles like well for any other types of noodles, you know, consists of like these variables. So, you know, solid ingredients, liquid ingredients, uh, wheat, you know, solid ingredients being like wheat flour, um, then, you know, there, there could be like gluten, uh, eggs, some kind of eggs, like in other types of like grain flours, rye flour, uh, maybe, Maybe like if it's like you no know, well gluten free, then rice flour, uh, or like buckwheat flour, or some. Um, then liquid ingredients, um, of course water, right? And then kansi, and uh, well kansi is something like you have to have for you know in your ramen noodles, and well salt and other stuff, right? And well noodle size is very important. So when you are so like crafting your noodles for tsukimen, you know, you need to like be aware of like all these variables. So, you know, wheat, fl wheat flour, right? And what's important here is like protein, right? Protein going to flour determines the hardness or softness of noodles. So um, basically the higher the protein content, the 
hard as a no texture. And the other thing that like, you have to notice like in the uh, uh, wheat flour is that like it's a viscosity value. And what we're looking at a starch of the wheat flour and inside the starch, right, there's like a, um, amylose and amylopectin. And the uh, ratio of these um, two um, well, things are like kind of balanced is like, well, that determines the, uh, the viscosity, like how elastic this all flour, a particular flour could be like when you made two noodles. So basically the higher the, you know, hell more elastic, you know, the two year bounce here. And hydration, uh, like how much water is contained in uh, noodles. So the higher, the softer, you know, the well, lower, the drier, and the harder. And of course, noodle size is very important to you. And basically, you, of course, like in the thicker, the harder, right? And uh, typically, a 2 came in. Uh, tends to be um, you know, thicker um, than the normal ramen noodles. And normally, um, tsukimen noodles are served cold and, you know, the soup is hot. Uh, but then, you know, there, there are like other type, like other cell, like other um, ways that like noodles are served and like they, they could uh, be served like, you know, warm or like in hot. I, I'm gonna explain like how they, do it like how we do it like later but like you know depending on that like the noodle texture could be like hard like when it's cold or like you know kind of softer like when it's warm so the noodle size is very important and um of course like also the shape of the noodles as well um but we're just talking about noodle size and well the shape here and then so to give me noodles like mazamen and other like sort of like flat noodles um, typically, or like between like, you know, like 2.0 to like, well, more like 1.7 to like maybe 5.0, um, you know, even like, you know, even thicker uh, or like wider uh, noodles. And so typical tsukimen noodle uh, size would be like, you know, thickness 2.2 with 2.5, but like there are many, many, many variations. So this is just, um, kind of typical, um, you know, regular size. And of course the shapes, different shapes, right? Um, there was a square rectangle, um, the flat and a round, like reverse cut, like, you know, there, there are many, like, well, the shapes, right? This, this is a cross section of noodles and uh, there are many shapes. And then this, this shape actually like affects the noodle texture as well. And so this is like one example, like well, the picture of that noodle uh, tsukimen dish that I had before. And then um, the noodle size are relatively thinner. Um, in this case, like I think it was like 1.6 or something. And then kind of close to square shape, but it was good. And so serving tsukimen noodles, like, you know, cooking of it is very, very important too. And when cooking noodles, you know, one thing, you know, we, oh, it's like, we, it's, it's worth like beating ourselves, like, you know, more over and over is that like, we want to use uh, soft water when cooking noodles. And, uh, those, you know, we, when we use hard water, um, especially when cooking tsukimen noodles, right? Because like tsukimen noodles tend to be thicker, which means that like, it's going to take a longer time. Um, you know, so that 2.2, uh, 2.5 size, like we are talking about, it's, it probably takes like around five to six minutes, right? So, but when we are using, I mean, we use the hard water to cook it, right? Um, it takes way longer, maybe, maybe like seven minutes, eight minutes, because there are a lot of, um, you know, minerals will contain in hard water, you know, magnesium, like calcium, right? Um, so, when we're cooking noodles, like all these like kansui, salt, and things like that, like in the, well, containing noodles, you know, they tend, well, they want to get out of noodles, right, into the cooking water. And, in, you know, in exchange, the noodles absorb like water. Noodles absorb water, right? Noodles absorb water. So, uh, yeah, that's how the noodle gets cooked. Um, but, you know, when we are using hot water to cook them, um, yeah, it takes time, 
right? Because there's less room for uh, what is the Gingudis to get out to, right? So um, it's not good. Um, and uh, so what, what we suggested, that, like, you know, you just need, to, well, I just want to, um, yeah, test your water for the hardness. And if it's hard enough, well, there's a certain level of hardness, like you have, you know, well, that when you install the, this kind of device, like soft water softener, um, that you are going to see the like uh, dr dramatic effect of this using this uh, water softener. So, yeah, it's like th there's some like certain level like so uh, hardness, water hardness that like you know if you install this kind of device, um, that would make like you know, big difference. So, what we suggest is that you um, measure this water hardness first. And another thing I you know because. Um, Tsukimi noodles like relatively thick, so meaning like, you know it's gonna take a long time to cook. And so um, another thing I want to well point out is that like you know the noodle cooker, right? Noodle cooker, and um, because when we are cooking noodles, you know the noodle um, the water gets uh, dirty and dirty over time with this uh, like cancelling salt, you know, well being released uh, from noodles to the cooking water. Um, then well when it gets dirty enough without enough, like, you know, it's dirty, um, then, you know, the efficiency of, like, cooking these noodles, like, it's, you know, worse and worse, right, over time, like, over um, many more of the noodles, so more of the noodles will be cooked, so we want to have, like, this kind of system, you know, where, you know, there's an overflow, right, and then when you're overflowing, when the water is overflowing, right, the dirty water, um, then we can add supply, like, you know, kind of clean water, um, that's ideally hot and to well, kind of maintain that well, uh, temperature for cooking water. And, and then there's a drainage, right? Drainage for the overflow. And so we can sort of circulate the, uh, the cooking water and kind of keeping the uh, cooking water like it really, really clean over time. And um, yeah, so like noodle cooker, right? And Right, and then like it has to be, it has to have like kind of high, it needs to be a, like high powered kind of heating system that like, well, backs up the cooking temperature as quickly as possible. Like when we add, you know, like water, uh, clean water, or like, you know, clean hot water, but like, you know, it's not, probably not hot enough as, like not a hot, as hot as like, well, boiling water. So yeah, we want to have like, yeah, the high powered heating. Uh, the cook, uh, noodle cooker and and also like when we are adding when we are putting like a new noodle right and of course noodle, the temperature noodles are like it's definitely lower than a cooking water right of course and so when we are putting like new noodles to cook then you know the you know that the temperature of the cooking water like it drops right so we want to have yeah like high power cook, cooker so that like you know um this one one serving of the noodles like being dropped in the cooker like wouldn't um well uh, reduce the uh cook, the cooking temperature as much and yeah so another thing is that like so it's it's about like right getting the right noodle texture and the reason we um yeah care about this like kind of cross-sectional like ratio like thickness and width is that like uh what well, the noodle like co cooking water um, gets absorbed like from the sides where uh, the the dough is cut by the the groove of the, the cutter that we usually cut you know uh, the noodles with, and so that's where uh, the soup and like you know cooking water uh, gets absorbed right. So like it kind of gets pressured right uh, from the sides and then kind of gets squished and then like even though it's like the thickness is well, uh, smaller than width. Uh, after the noodles are cooked, right, it gets squared, like kind of, well, you know, squared with like kind of dent in the four sides. And so that's where um, the noodles, um, they cold wrap in, right? So like these these dents uh, help, you know, noodles carry more soup, right? So um, that's why, like when you dip noodles in and then, you know, when you eat it and then, you know, you, um, taste more of the soup yeah and then reverse cut noodles like it is kind of the opposite of the uh, the other way around 
Um, so uh, like there are larger areas like where you know the soup is like soup and water is, uh, gets absorbed and well uh, in terms of noodle texture it's not doesn't taste good right but doesn't feel good but like um, but it has larger uh, area of like absorption so um, you know it absorbs more soup right so well that that's kind of um, reverse cut noodles are usually used in uh, well, what we call like EAK ramen. And yeah, when serving like tsukimi noodles, like, it's important to well, wash them, wash them because uh, there's like uh, starch, right, uh, on the surface of noodles. So it kind of gives the uh, sort of like slimy kind of texture, you know, some people, well, which some people don't like. So usually like after we cook them, cook the noodles, uh, we wash them right uh, in the sink and uh, the running water. And so we usually have like for two, serving sukimin noodles, like with the efficiency, we usually have like a okay, noodle cooker and then there's a double sink, right? Like first thing like for, you know, moving starch off the noodles and well, the second sink for kind of chilling the noodles, chilling the noodles because um, on default, default like uh, tsukimi noodles that uh, are like served cold, right? So that's how like well uh, the the noodle cooker and you know double sink like sort of kind of this uh, noodle serving station is set up. And so tsukimi noodles, um, you know. They're, they're like diff, two different versions um, that you could order, uh, like probably three different versions, but like usually two. And so it's it goes through the process like cooking and washing and chilling, right? And, you know, so default is chill, chilled noodles. And, but, you know, when people like want um, kind of warmed noodles, like you could order like warmed noodles. And so after chilling, right, um, you could, I mean, they, they could like warm them warm the noodles and will serve you, I'll serve you the warm the noodle. And that way, um, you know, the noodles wouldn't reduce the uh, the temperature of the dipping soup. So, because um, when you're dipping the cold noodles, like over and over, like, you know, that the temperature of the dipping soup, like, you know, gets colder and colder, right? Which would not be a um, good uh, sort of, you know, heating experience. So. Um, because then dipping noodle, dipping soup, like you know, gets colder and colder. Like uh, that's, you know, that's that's not really good. So, um, so cooking, washing, chilling, and um, the warming using the noodle cooker, maybe. Uh, so that's the for um, kind of warmed uh, noodles. So now as we dip the cold noodles, um, the temperature is like well, I, it's not really like no, maybe not be correct, but like. It's 20 degrees Celsius, let's say, right? A dipping so soup is like like 80 degrees Celsius, right? And so, like as we dip more noodles in, uh, the dipping soup like you know gets cold and cold like really fast, right? And some shops actually also like well, um, well, what do you call it? Um, so kind of they grill, I mean they heat the like some like rocks, right? And then they serve like the customers the rock and you know, they dump the rock in the dipping soup. And so that, well, um, that way, like, you know, they can like reheat the soup. Yeah, we have a question, like someone's asking like, well, um, he he has the uh, number 18 cutter and like, he's wondering like if he can use it for um, tsukimi noodles. Yes, you can. And, you know, um, so there are many types of like tsukimi noodles and you know well um it depends on the kind of dipping soup you're doing too um normally normally so normally right um um the strength of like so like the flavor like the taste right like how intense the soup would be like in the dipping soup right um tendency is that like well the the stronger the soup, the strongest, like heavier and thicker the soup, um, the thicker the noodles, noodle is. And 
yeah, like what's light out of the deep in soup is like the, the thinner the noodles is. Like that's a tendency. Um, and uh, of course, like you can make them flat as well. Uh, so it kind of, you know, depends on what, what you are, what kind of deep in soup you're, um, you know, coupling your noodles with as well. And so, yeah, so noodles tends to be like kind of average, right? Average, like, uh, according to noodles when serving like 150 grams like fresh noodles weight and when you cook them right uh, it becomes it expanded with that like cooking water right so um, around like 1.6 times or like 1.7 times so like, it gets like gets up to like you no know, 240 grams uh, or 250 grams cooked, cooked weight and uh, when we are serving these warmed noodles, uh, let's say that temperature is like, well, uh, 50 to 60 degrees Celsius, right? So, you know, when we dip these noodles uh, in the dipping soup, right? Like, so that dipping soup, you know, does not get uh, cold as, you know, fast as like if you're dipping like noodles that's served cold. So that's one way or, you know, but when you think about it, right? Um, yeah, like in terms of noodle texture, uh, the cold noodles, of course, like, you know, it's it's harder and it has this like sort of like distinctive uh, noodle texture that you can only get from like cold uh, chilled noodles. But like, if you have like warmed noodles, um, you know, of course, they are softer and, you know, they don't give you like as much bite as like, you know, you'd like, you might like. So it's, it's kind of a trade off between like, you know, noodle texture and um, sort of, uh, the, the dipping noodle uh, soup temperature uh, that you may, you know, may, maybe will enjoy. And I think some people say that, like, you know, why do you, like, why, why tsukimen, like, you know, well, why do you eat, like, you know, something cold and something hot at the same time, right? Like, so uh, I, so, someone says that, like, some people say that, like, well, um, you know, what well, we, we human beings, like, have, like, kind of tend to taste um, kind of umami and, like, some other, uh, it was, like, bitterness and, you know, uh, like sweetness and well, like you know, some like five uh, types of taste, um, two or three types of taste. Like you know, we we kind of feel like sort of strongly like when the you know temperature of the um, the whatever the food like we eating right um, gets well, uh, you know, it's like towards the kind of the middle of the temperature. So like kind of like kind of getting warmer like in your mouth. Um, so that's, that's why like, well, the, you know, we, we eat the, eat something cold and something hot at the same time. I, I hope <laughs> it makes sense. But, um, but anyway, so like, um, ramen toppings, right? Uh, ramen toppings, um, you use chashu and, well, of course, um, marinated egg and other stuff, but like basically chashu and, um, you know, I, I think, well, some, some ramen shops, like two came in, specialty ramen shop, um, give you guys the uh, kind of different different types, like raw chashu, uh, slice of chashu, pork chicken, uh, like uh, kind of slowly cooked, um, yeah, uh, chashu uh, slice, and a marinated uh, egg, and it's some sort of like citrus, uh, right? And then just like lime or something like in the middle, of the, you know, when you are eat like kind of halfway through, and uh, kind of get, getting sort of, um, it's not really fed up, but like, you know, kind of getting used to the taste and then like, you know, when you like, well, uh, you know, add like just a uh, lime and to the soup and then like, you know, kind of kind of refreshes that sort of like, kind of gives you like a kind of new sort of kind of refreshing taste. And um, it's kind of easy to like custom, like customize uh, tsukime and uh, there are a lot of like tsukime specialty shop like that do this and you know, you could use, uh, choose, pick uh, like base, base soup, right? Basic soups, like tsukime, like spicy tsukime, like you know, tantan tsukime or something like that, like other, there are other types maybe. And you know, of course, like there are toppings, different types of topping, marinade, eggs, vegetables, chashu, like wonton, member, like even like cheese and um, some people hate it, but like natto, uh, kind of fermented, uh, you know, soybeans. Um, then you could choose like noodle types, different noodle types, then different side dishes, right? And what, what's interesting, like in Tsukimen noodle, because, you know, people go to Tsukimen specialty shop to eat noodles, right? Eat noodles. 
basically. So you can pick, you can like choose, select, you know, different, uh, the volume, right? Um, the noodle serving size, and even like regular serving size, like, you know, that's 300 grams, 300 grams, and a medium of 450 grams, and large, like even like 600 grams. And then they, they don't have like the some like extreme large, some like that's 1.5 kilograms of noodles. That's a lot. And then you could, you know, that's what we are talking about, like noodle temperature, um, hot, like, you know, and then, well, it's warm, but like just kind of, they wash them and they kind of, you know, they move the starch right off the noodles and then they, they're cold or like ice chilled. So very, very cold and tight uh, noodle texture. So yeah, you could, uh, you know, um, because the cost of producing, well, if you're doing the, um, homemade noodles, the cost of producing like one serving noodles is like, or like, you know, or like increasing the, um, the, uh, the noodle size, right? It's like, it's not like, it's not really costly compared to like other, uh, you know, like soups and stuff. Um, so for example, like in this particular shop, right? Um, up to 600 grams, that's, you know, that's, there's no difference that there's no difference in price. Right. So that's, you know, that's what you can do with the homemade noodles as well. Like is the, you know, the cost of like producing noodles is like really low. So if you're doing homemade. Okay. And, um, okay. Before we start, uh, making, um, skimmy noodles, I'm just going to want to, uh, just to talk a little bit about like our, um, Martin Noodle School online, and uh, of course, like Tsukemi is covered in there as well. And you know, you, you can actually, well, uh, make a, any kind of ramen as well, like you know, ramen bowls. And then um, we now actually started doing the, um, uh, you know, offering like different uh, payment options. Um, you, know, you could uh, pay like for once, like at one time, and then like you know, you could do uh, like you know, initially pay like you know, all, uh, for example. Uh, 150, uh, hundred dollars, something like then, you know, like you could make the like payment installments and stuff. So, um, you know, it's, yeah, it's getting easier and easier. Like, you know, we try to make it easier and easier for you guys to like start running, um, our, at our like ramen school. So, uh, please check out our, uh, ramen school online, online school.com. I mean, dot yamatunu.com. So, okay. So let's, yeah, get started on, uh, Chicken noodles. <clears throat> yeah, so you meet prepared uh, ingredients here, and yeah, the the flour, right? Flour looks like a regular flour, but like actually. Um, yeah, this is actually, well, 50% um, brownie flour, 50% um, udon flour. And what's, what's interesting, like, tsuke men, because uh, it's, cause it's sort of, like, unique, like, or noodle texture, uh, we normally, not normally, but, like, you know, sometimes we, like, blend, like, different types of flour. Different types of flour, meaning, like, different uh, uh, protein, uh, you know, content like different, uh, like viscosity, like elastic value. Um, so, well, blending different flowers, you know, with different, uh, you know, protein and like, you know, viscosity, you know, give you like really interesting, uh, well, a noodle texture. So that's what we're doing. Um, <clears throat> okay, and uh, the salt, currency, and water. <clears throat> So it's it's a very simple uh, recipe. Like other than you know, you have two two different types of flour blended. Right? And so this is a Richman one machine, and uh, and then. Yeah, so before, yeah, before we add the liquid, right, um, you know, we need to make sure that, like, well, can see salt or thoroughly resolved, 
dissolving it um, in the water. And so this is a rich memory machine, and uh, it's, uh, it's it happened to be like the well C version, cheap C version. So that's um, that can be used uh, in EU countries, and uh, you know where like C mark, like that safety standard is required for any goods like going to EU countries. So yeah, it's, this is C certified machine, and so it, this mixer uh, is 10 kilograms mixer, like 10 kilograms mixer. But that means that like you can mix up to like 10 kilograms of solid ingredients, right? And on top of it, you're adding liquid, right? So a maximum you can make um, like up to like around like 14 kilograms of dough at a time, right? And um, so cheap, but like for this batch, right? For this batch, because um, minimum batch is like four, right? Four, so as four solid ingredients, like you know, flour, uh, it's just four kilograms. And uh, then liquid, right? Liquid, like, you no, know, I, I just talked a little bit about hydration, but like, uh, the tsukeme noodles are, you know, being like uh, on the thicker side. So being thick means like, you know, kind of harder, right? So we want to make them uh, more softer because like, you know, if you make them like hard, hard, and then like you know, thick and hard, then that's that's just hard, that'd be like hard to eat, right? So um, yeah, tends to be, the tsukeme noodles tend to be high in hydration. So this particular um, recipe, um, goes for like 38% hydration, 38% hydration, and and uh, yeah, so make me prepare the dough in advance, and so that's after mixing, right? So after mixing, and uh, you can see that you know the white flour kind of turned into. Uh, Kind of pale yellow color, right? Uh, so that that's a that's the effect of uh, kansui. It's effect of kansui. And and then this is the kind of dough size, right? Dough size um, kind of like this crumbles dough. Um, so that's 38 percent, 38 percent to the weight of flour. Um, so that's how big the dough size dough size gets. And so what Mingmi is doing right now is like he's making the uh, rough sheet of dough first. And this machine has like big roller, big rollers, right? Like two rollers. Um, yeah, two rollers. And then, you know, it's, uh, so in between, right? Uh, so there's a clearance, right? There's a clearance. And uh, so this front of the dough is like going there to get squ squished right and then like to be to, to be turned into like a well, sheet of dough and uh, so that's the first step um making noodles and uh but you know the dough is like, still pretty pretty fragile so um yeah we need we want to make it like armor like harder and strengthen it and so that's the next step but now you're just doing the, uh, or what we call like wrap foaming, and you know, you're just kind of feeding this like rumbles dough into the roller to make, well, a sheet of dough that's that's coming out from the other side of the machine. So it's a uh, yeah, so this machine is actually very quiet, and uh, you know, um, you can you can almost hear nothing from the uh, the roller, and it's it's very very quiet, and that's why a lot of our customers are using this machine. Will use the machine, um, yeah, inside the inside the restaurant, and. Uh, you know, it's like so they set up this machine like you know where uh, customers can see and you know so well they make noodles like while like in customers dining and you know like some curious customers 
Yes, this, uh, yeah, this is a, well, there's a question like, yeah, this is a Richmond one machine and it happens to be like C version, C version. And uh, so it's, well, single phase, like 230 volt. And so, you know, and then you can just plug right into your, um, so, uh, yeah, wall socket and, you know, just start using it like, and yeah, basically, basically this is how, we ship, right? Almost like this is basically how we ship the machine. So uh, once it arrives in your place, you know, you can just like start using it almost like right away. But, you know, it's in Japan, right? We're in Japan, so uh, we need to use this kind of converter. Um, yeah, we just like kind of this transformer. Yeah, that, that piece of uh, box like will converts the the voltage, um, well, in Japan, like that's like 100 volts. So, you, call, you know, like the input is 100 volts, yeah, but like output, you know, outputting like more well, 230 volt into the machine so that, you know, we can use this particular uh, piece of equipment um, with the wall, or well, here, right here in Japan. Yeah, so, yeah, because we ship a lot of these machines, um, uh, particularly to Europe, so uh, we need to test them right before we uh, ship them out. So we have this transformer uh, to, you know, power the machine and, you know, test it. So what we're doing right now is that, like, we are um, making this dough well stronger. Um, yeah, strong in the sense that, like, you know, we when we work out and, you know, kind of build our muscles, um, kind of some, you know, it's kind of something similar and. Uh, you know, we kind of working the dough, right? By separating the dough, right? Um, it was like single, single sheet of uh, dough, and we separated it into two, and you know, we are sort of like com compounding them um, through the rollers. And so, the dough that's getting out of the roller uh, is actually smoother and firmer. Yeah, so like we're working the dough to sort of like build um, the gluten structures inside the dough. And, you know, we usually do this process um, like one, once, twice, like depending on what kind of noodle we are making. But um, for this one, like we do it for the second time. And, uh, And yeah, like some of you like watching, like, you know, think that like, oh, it's kind of going slowly, but like we are doing the like slow, I mean, we're doing like slowly, like a um, purpose. And um, so up to this point, uh, we're, we're working the dough, right? So we are like, so like we want to apply the pressure, well, you know, slowly, right, uh, to work the dough. and. Um, so we are going slow, and um, but from this point on, right, we are, um, you know, we're done like walking the door, walking the door. So uh, we are going to just going to thin the door, right? Um, so from this point on, we just we start uh, the dusting, dusting it um, to keep dough from sticking. Yeah, especially this is this is the. Um, um, you know, what we consider like high hydration noodles, high hydration noodles, right? So, um, yeah, we, you know, definitely this dough is going to stick, you know, this, this noodle is going to stick. So you want to dust it well. And, uh, so this is a, this is an automatic duster, like in this working right now. And, uh, you can, you can, um, adjust the like volume of dusting as well. Yeah, so like the wetter the dough, right? Higher the hydration dough, right? The more you need to dust, right? And you know, so from this point on, we, we are going to just you know thin the dough, um, and uh, then we can go faster, can go faster, and uh, so you can yeah control the uh, the roller speed, 
as well. Like it's very easy. Like you just uh, touch of a knob and touch of volume and uh, you go faster and they're like, you know, dusting at the same time. And, and also like you can, well, um, while you're rolling, while, while you're sheeting the dough, like in operating the roller unit, you can, you know, well, also like operate the mixer unit as well, like because uh, the motor is separate. So you know, we can do that. Okay, so so that's this door just went through a roller gap of like two millimeter, two millimeter, and now it's gonna go through the uh, roller gap of like one point five millimeter. I mean, meter, and that's that's actually, yeah, that's actually pretty thin, uh, 1.5. And um, yeah, like speaking of like thickness, um, you know, you can you can actually make. Um, you know, such thing as like dumpling skin, like wonton skin, the this machine to like make it, you know, really, really thin. It's like, um, you know, like even less than 1.0 millimeter, like, you know, point, point 0.6 millimeter or something. Very, very thin, right? Um, so you get, you can make such uh, skins, um, you know, pretty efficiently. And then you can also do like, uh, well, like the lasagna sheet, for example, um, like or certain types of pasta, and and of course, like well, um, some, well, certain types of like udon noodles, you know, well, certain types of like soba noodles as well. Okay, so um, let's see the actual thickness. That's one point nine point. Three two five millimeter, and so that's going through like 1.5 millimeter, and then uh, it's 1.9, um, it's like 0 0.4 different millimeter difference, and you know we we, we need to like um, measure the actual thickness before we start cutting, because um, the actual thickness is all, like always bigger uh, than the roll gap we set, because um, you know dough dough right, so it's like we dough um, it you know just bounces back. Uh, kind of expands like after it's gone through the roller gap or clearance. So yeah, so we need to uh, set the roller gap before we cut like accordingly and to you know get that right final thickness. And then this is the cutter, right? That's the cutter, and you know that his cutter like you done like the width width of the noodles. Of noodles, like each group in that cutter, um, you know, you tell me it's the well, it's gonna be like the noodles, right? And so, one point, well, that's 16, number 16 cutter, so that's that's like a 2.0 millimeter width, yeah, 2.0 millimeter width, right? And so, let's start cutting. Yeah, it's uh, yes. Someone asked like uh, if the conveyor comes with the um, this Richmond one machine. Yes, it does. And then yeah, because well, um, the conveyor. Um, 
no, it's it, it comes with the machine, uh, comes with the machine, and I get the default yeah, standard. Um, yes. So because we have a conveyor because uh, it gives us the uh, higher point of like catching noodles, and uh, well, if you're you know tall person and then you know like imagine like doing that for like well um, you know two hours like you no know, and then you you hurt your back like you have like back aches and like uh, you know and then imagine that like doing that for you know imagine doing that for like um, you know five days straight um, yeah that that's gonna hurt your back so and um, another feature uh, Pretty convenient with this machine is that like you can adjust the length right you can adjust the length of noodles and this is very important because you know well especially when it comes to, like sukeme noodles right uh sukeme noodles tend to be well tend to like you know like be uh, like big in uh serving size right so um yeah when you're offering well um target customer like eating a lot and um, you know, you want to have like, you want to control the serving size, right? You want to control the serving size by adjusting the length of the noodles. So once you adjust the length of the noodles, then that's automatic. But, um, yeah, but, you know, depending on the type of noodle you're making, you know, you want to change your um, serving size as well. So, yeah, so that's, okay, the mixing is done. All right, so that's this is uh, it's gonna be like really great good turkey man noodles. Okay, so let's move to let's move to the kitchen and wanna cook these noodles and yeah, there are a lot of different types of noodle making machines here. And um, <clears throat> right, so and this is our kitchen. Okay, the lights. All right, so over here we have something prepared. So like this is our kitchen, like where you know we teach uh, our in person, uh, ramen school, um, you know, udon school, and uh, yeah, so we, we've got like everything, like you know, like for production soups and uh, the noodle cookers and everything, right? Uh, the noodle cooker, like I was just kind of talking about before, uh, is this one. So, um, so it's got the faucet, right? Faucet, like actually runs soft water, soft water. You know, soft water is important, right? And it runs hot water as well, hot soft water. And see that this is a drainage, right? That's for the overflow drainage, right? So like whenever like, you know, like water overflows and they like, you know, kind of like draining dirty water out, but like you can, you know, uh, supply like clean water, clean soft water, uh, clean soft hot water in there. So, uh, so that you can kind of create the kind of circulation like clean water and, so yeah, this is a very important part of your Tsukemen specialty shop if you're doing that. And so over here we uh, made a bunch of like different types of like noodles like for Tsukemen. Uh, yeah, someone asked me like, well, uh, do we do we produce like these noodle cookers? No, we don't. Uh, and uh, but you know we can. Um, refer you to some um, uh, makers or like you know we can help you as well procure it so yeah feel free to um, ask us that and so these are like different types of like noodles we made for Tsukemen and so this is like kind of well well uh, it's, uh, yeah uh, kind of you know we wanted like make so like white white color noodles right white color noodles and for that, right, like we reduce the amount of like currency as well as like, you know, we use like different types of currency. Um, so the, what, what makes the noodle color like kind of yellow is that like that's potassium carbonate, right? So we use the uh, currency that uh, 
has like less potassium carbonate, or, like you know higher ratio of, like sodium carbonate. Sodium carbonate like doesn't make them make the noodles like yellow, you know. So that's why like they're kind of you know whiter. And then uh, we change that uh, kind of well the ratio of the like udon flour, ramen flour as well, and uh, you know noodle size. And then um, and then notice that like they are called right, and then they're called by hand. So you know like if the hydration is like high enough, like you can make them curly by hand. Or you can make you know call it by machine, and uh, yeah, so like these are flat noodles, and you know there are a bunch of other no types of noodles, and then um, you know different sizes, right? And then these got like these got like kind of like whole wheat flour powder, like whole wheat powder as well, like kneaded in them. Okay, so let's start cooking them, right? Start cooking them like so. This is the one we just made, right? The one we just made. All right, so, you know, we're supposed to, like, cook in a bigger pot, of course, but, like, um, yeah, this is just for this class, so, like, you know, sorry for, um, it's just kind of a like small pot, but, like, well, you get the idea, right? And when you're cooking them, right, when you cook noodles, like, it's important to, well, um, first, like, you bring the water to boil first, and then, like, you uh, throw the noodles in there, right? You know, just make sure that, like, water is boiling before you uh, add the noodles in there. But, like, once you, um, once the noodles in there, um, that, you know, but then you want to, well, keep, well, reduce the heat, and then sort of, like, you know, like, uh, keep the water kind of, like, kind of simmering a little bit like this and um yeah so that like noodles sort of like kind of moving around but like not too much um you know but they are cooking right <laughs> they're cooking and over here like she's uh heating the the stock right the stock um that has already um that already has the uh, like tare and uh, uh all the oil flavored oil in it and uh, some soup calls for um, well, cooking some like you know fish powder, like fine, fine, finely, fine meal, uh, finely milled fish powder, and um, and then but you are adding the fish powder over here, and then you know cause this gives the kind of like viscosity, right? Uh, kind of viscosity and uh, the soup, right? So that um, that well, when you when you dip noodles. Um, that you know that like that soup will coat the noodles um, better and uh, so you you have like when you when you eat noodles then you know you have like you know like more more taste of the soup okay so once you cook the noodles right and you know as we are talking about right you wanna first like wash them and like, you know, like chill them and wash them. And what we're doing here is like, we are trying to like remove the starch off the noodles, right? And um, yeah, for this particular dish, and then we are chilling, right? We are chilling the noodles. We are chilling the noodles and So when you chill noodles, like, and then the noodle texture actually gets tighter, you know, it gets, like, firmer, well, like, firmer and harder, and so that's, um, so, like, it's, it's totally different, like, um, it's very, I mean, way firmer than, you know, when you cook, like, just cooked, right, uh, cooked the noodles, and um, we added these noodles in this bowl, right, and then this bowl is filled with this, um, the dashi, uh, the stock, right, that's made of kelp, uh, certain types of kelp. And uh, so this is like what's trending in Japan right now. And um, by, you know, soaking the noodles in the kelp, right? And then the temperature is not like, it's not as, it was not like, it's not hot at all. Like it's just kind of cold. But then by soaking the noodles in the, the dashi, right? And then your know, noodle gets uh, flavor of dashi at the same time, like um, it works, uh, like kind of functions as like sort of, you know, cause noodles, when you, 
just put the noodles in there, right? And then, you know, there's nothing, like no water. Um, then the noodles tend to stick together over time, right? But like when you put the noodles, soak the noodles in dashi, right? Then, you know, you get the flavor of the kelp. And then at the same time, you, you know, you're, well, uh, you, you want to have like kind of, you know, risk of like getting noodles stuck together, right? And then when you dip the noodles in the, uh, dip, dip in soup, right? And, you know, as you eat it, like, um, the the kelp, right? Kelp, um, uh, well, the kelp dashi will get into the soup, right? And then like, that kind of changes the well, flavor and taste of the soup over time. So, well, as you eat it, as you eat more noodles, um, the, you know, the taste and the flavor changes. So that's, that's very important. So that's what's trending. And then you can probably try with uh, different types of dashi, different types of ingredients. Um, so, well, um, so that's what's trending right now. And, you know, for kelp, um, you know, if you are, well, if you have some access to, you know, like uh, seashore or like, you know, and then, you know, you may be able to like um, kind of find some um, kelp as well. So that's it. So like, well, hope to see you guys on for the next Friday and uh, until next time, like, you know, well, stay tuned, stay healthy. And so thank you. Thank you for watching. So, bye-bye.